do it, but shit. Oh my god. VOR navigation is slowly diminishing in, let me back up, it's rapidly diminishing in the US. In fact, the, the majority, the overwhelming majority of the VORs are already scheduled to be phased out. Okay, so they're on the chopping block already. There will always be some sort of VOR system because nothing's more reliable than navigation that you have there on your own property, okay? So at one point in time, we'll still have some VORs. ADFs have been removed. Non-directional beacons have been removed from the private pilot qualification. We don't even use them anymore, okay? Our nav is the primary source of navigation. If I'm gonna use radio navigation. So there's three kinds of navigation. Remember, we talked about two of them already. What's the first one? Pilotage, that's correct. Pilotage, what else? Dead reckoning, okay? Now we get into radio navigation. And the first type of radio navigation we get into is VOR navigation, all right? Don't hold your breath on everybody being okay with VOR navigation. We're not going to know much about it today. And that's all right. But let's go through the high, high points, okay? Here's your key terms. VOR is nothing more than a very high frequency omnidirectional range. So VHF, omnidirectional range, that's your VOR. VOR DME is the same thing, a way to determine where I am in direction, but then also how far away am I from that distance measuring equipment. And it works on a slant range, okay? So from the transceiver to the antenna of your airplane. You guys can see we got a little bit of a hypotenuse problem here in the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, we're not solving all that, but that's a slant range. Okay, Vortac, which is nothing more than a VOR DME with a TAC-in receiver. So something that has the channel, right? Channel 85, channel, whatever we said. And something I told you, how does every flight instructor handle a question that they don't know the answer to? They say it is? Military, and okay, so tack in is military. All right, radial. Radial is very important to this. We said radial when we were talking about that uh, crosswind chart. Okay, yeah, we will talk about a radial with respect to navigation now, okay? Compass rose, just a compass, a, an orientation to north, in this case to magnetic north, and in this case to magnetic north when the station was first placed in service, okay? So magnetic north does change over a period of years, correct? Whenever that station was first placed in service, that is the magnetic north that's referenced on the VORs. So when we looked at our navigation charts the other day, remember seeing that each one of those VORs had a, a compass rose around it? and each one of them showed a north seeking arrow, that north seeking arrow points towards magnetic north on the day that VOR was placed in service. It might not be the same magnetic north it is today, okay? If I wanna find out the exact magnetic north that it's referencing, where do I look? The ugly green book. Yes, it's always the answer. All right, that's where you find that information. Okay, terminal VOR, a very low service volume VOR. So low service volume means just that, volume. If I talk very softly like that right there. That's a terminal VOR. It's not, I can't hear it very far away. Of course, low altitude VOR, high altitude VOR, that high service volume VOR, this is why, remember I was telling you, Joe, every time I'm teaching at the school, he comes over and closes the door for me because I'm usually disturbing everybody. All right, Omni bearing selector, how I choose my desired track. I want to choose the track and I can choose any track I want to or any, any reference of that course that I want to, all right? Course deviation indicator, how far am I off of my desired track? Or I might just turn this thing until the deviation indicator centers. 
so I can determine where I am relative to that station. Couple of different ways to use these things and it's kind of neat. To from indicator, so the 100 and the 280, you know, the sniff test. Well, this one does it for you. This one will tell you the to or the from, all right? Reverse sensing, ah, cone of confusion. That's where we all are now, the cone of confusion. All right. Nah, no, just kidding. Here we get to what the cone of confusion actually means. All right, tracking, bracketing, triangulation. VOR orientation, checkpoint test facilities. Horizontal situation indicator. Distance measuring equipment and slant range distance. Here we go. The premise behind VOR indications is that they are line of sight indicators. I don't know who in their right mind decided that one of them was gonna be over here and one of them was gonna be in the Indian Ocean. I don't know, okay? But this is what they use to show us the curvature of the earth. The idea was is that if the pilot was flying too low, they might not be able to receive either one of those VORs. If they were flying at a sufficient altitude, they could receive one but not the other. Same thing over here. And if that pilot was flying high enough, they could receive both. Now, the true limitation of these VOR indicators is somewhere around, you know, realistically 80, 90, 100 nautical miles, if you're in the flight levels, okay? It's 100% not the opposite side of the earth. All right, but just an example. Here, here I've got the three different depictions. A depiction is nothing more than a picture. A picture put on, put on the chart. So it's either a VHF Omni range, a VOR, or put a box around it and it's a VOR DME, or put some stuff on there for the military so they could use that same facility and it's called a Vortac, okay? I use this one and I don't have any distance measuring equipment uh, capabilities off that. I could use either one of these two, the exact same. The only difference between these two is that government aircraft can't use anything except for that one. But we, sh we share the same facilities, okay? So here's the name of it. Here is the frequency for it. That's the military channel. This is the three letter identifier for Cherokee, Charlie Kilo Whiskey. And Charlie Kilo Whiskey spells out in Morse code like this, C-K-W. And then underneath here, I've got, looks like Casper, which is the flight service station associated with 122.4. So that's my communication frequency box, okay? Same type of thing here with the Vortec. Cedar Creek, frequency, VHF frequency. Channel, three letter identifier. This is it, this is it in Morse code, C-Q-Y. Do I have any flight service station available there? Not by this frequency, no. There probably is one somewhere close by, but not here. All right, radial. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Airplane or aircraft heading does not matter. Believe me when I tell you, and that's, it, that's usually where pilots will screw up. And if, if, if you don't get that, or you don't believe that, or you can't visualize that, then we're not gonna use VORs, and again, that's okay. But airplane heading makes no difference at what you see on your VOR indicator in the aircraft. It only shows position, and position relative to the angle formed by your airplane and the magnetic north of that facility. Those are called radials. So this one is 360 or zero, that's fine. This one is 90, 180, 270, easy. And it looks like they put 10 degree increments on all of them, okay? So 10, 20, 30, 40, okay, that's fine. They have names for 360 of them, that's it. So zero through 359, those are all named. That's the only radials that you'll possibly have. Just because you can't read any more, any, any more than one degree increment on that indicator, okay? Let's talk just for a moment, and I wanna tell you that we look at an indicator in just a little bit, but I wanna tell you and make you believe and make sure that you can truly appreciate 
that the airplane right now is currently over the 090 radial. Okay? Where is it now? Okay. <laughs> you guys are almost there. It's actually that easy. Okay? Where is it now? Same, Same place. Okay? Hold on. There's a word called reciprocal, which means nothing more than add or subtract 180 degrees, but keep it under 360, right? That's why add or subtract. So go to the other side. I'm currently on the reciprocal of 090. But what radial am I on? 270. 270. Same, right? We're perfect. Okay, that's great. So the radial that you're on, that's the indication you have from the facility. It has nothing to do with if the airplane is flying to or from, nothing. This is where is the airplane located? The to and from only shows me either I'm on the radial from or I'm on the reciprocal to. So I'm on 090 radial. The indication I get, the sniff test that's given to me right there on the screen, is I get a 090 from. What do I get? Same thing, 090 from. Because it describes the position of the airplane. The position of the airplane didn't change. Only the heading changed and nothing on that indicator shows you heading. A horizontal situation indicator shows heading at the same time. We'll touch it at the end, but that horizontal situation indicator, the HSI still has a VOR indication on it. And it shows the exact same 090 with a from indication. What do I get right here? 270 with a from indication or 090 with a two. It's the same, the exact same, okay? All right, vigorous thumbs up. We're working this, it's easy. Now then, here it goes, Salinas uh, Vortac located on a field at Salinas Airport, open dot indicates that the approximate location. You could describe where you are based on indications from two different VORs. If I know I have one VOR and I have another VOR and I'm on radials of both, they only intersect at one point. So that one point is where my airplane is located. This is your VOR radio. That's the comm radio, how you talk to ATC and listen to ATC. This is the VOR receiver. The information you get on the panel is here with an OBS, an Omni Bearing Selector, which allows you to choose which one of these courses you're trying to use. And you have your to and from flag here. And a course deviation indicator to show how many degrees you are left or right of course. Each one of those dots represents two degrees, okay? Now we're, we're close to the end of time. We're also pretty close to the end of this section, but take a look at this. And this just proves again, the fact that the heading does not matter. I get a 120 with a from indication or a 300 with the two. We did that already. Heading doesn't make any difference. CDI indicates that you're on the selected course. If I wasn't actually on the selected course, then I would be off just a little bit. And what I do is I have to visualize they placed an airplane on this VOR indicator because I have to, it doesn't matter which way the airplane's headed, but I have to visualize that it's heading in that direction. Because if I'm off to the left, this means I would need to turn my airplane to the left until I get four degrees more to the left. And then I would be on course. Exactly why I put my left and right on there because you have to visualize that your airplane is heading in that direction. Doesn't matter which way it's heading. You get the same indication. I can't turn the airplane around and expect this to be on the right. It won't. So that's why you visualize that it's here.
have these classes in Sky Eagle Aviation Academy, check out please our website www.atp.academy for details. Okay, airplane A and turn towards the needle to, rego to regain the course. Facing uh, east, okay? So now I've got east selected with a from indication. All right, where's my airplane? 090 from, somewhere over here. If I've got a left indication, I have to turn my airplane to the left to get back on course. So that tells me that I must be somewhere south of course. So my airplane is somewhere here. Now, does it matter that it's facing 090? No, it could be facing the other way. I'm still in the same position. It could be here. I'm just four degrees off reference that airplane facing that course, all right? Okay, <clears throat> couple of different things. Cone of confusion, are we there yet? I feel like we might be. The cone of confusion exists when I have no to or from flag. It occurs in a few places. It occurs either directly over the station or a beam my selected course. A beam means 90 degrees off the nose. So if my airplane was directly over the course or 90 degrees off my desired course, the to from flag turns off momentarily and then it switches as I go to the other side. All right, that's your cone of confusion. Typically speaking, one of them would look like this. It would give you an airway route. This is a long time ago, the way that they would make these. They don't really make them this way anymore. And you wouldn't see one even if this is a terminal uh, VOR. You wouldn't even see one. They had one in Pompano and a hurricane broke it. Okay. I actually like the one that they had in top Pompano, but Hurricane Andrew destroyed it. And they don't build them again. When a hurricane breaks them, that's like, oh, well, too bad. GPS, man. All right. Coming back to it. If I want to get myself back on course, we do this thing called bracketing. Earlier, we decided if I made a course correction and it made me parallel my course, then I would double that course correction and get back on course. Okay, the idea here is I start and I'm off course. Apply a wind correction angle, get back on course, and then take half of that wind correction angle away. If I haven't yet gotten on course, in other words, I deflect one way or another, then add half of that correction back in. Continue to take half and half. This turns, into the, this turns into the fun project of could I ever get anywhere, right? Can I make it to that door? Yes. Well, I say I can't. Oh, well, how's that? Well, can I get halfway there? Yeah. And then once you get halfway there, could you get halfway there again? Yeah. And half and half and half and half and you never get there. Well, okay. Half and half and half and half. Again, eventually, those become very small corrections and you're on corners. Okay, that's bracketing. You're welcome. All right, here we go. Here we go, set up an intercept angle, like I said, 45 degree intercept angle, some way to get yourself back on course and then establish. This pilot, what did they do? They're tracking inbound. You see cumulus cloud ahead. Okay, you wanna change that course. You can select a different course. Instead of selecting 070, select 090. That changes the new desired track up here reestablish center and fly in, okay? If you guys have followed me so far and this is just a little too much, that's okay, all right? That's just fine. I like where we are with this. So far, it's good. All right, monitor process or monitor your progress towards a checkpoint. Number two, radio, right? I got number one indicator tuned to Red Bluff. Number two, tuned to Chico. Center both and find out where I am. That is simple triangulation. I know I'm along the course here, wherever that course is, and then I know that I'm on this line, so where these two things meet, that's where I am located. How many of us are gonna carry that big map and open it up and have a straight edge in there and pencil? No, okay, so an idea in, in theory, but not very practical. This is what your written exam will look like, just as an example to determine which one of these indications I would get based on where I am in the airplanes. The problem is pilots to spend too much time thinking about heading, 
If you just replace all of these airplanes with a dot, it becomes much, much easier. Here, I know I got, in this case, 360 with a from indication. Where's my airplane? Gotta be here. I could care less what the heading is. Don't concern yourself with the heading. If I look at this one, it's facing, or if it, my desired track is set to 270 and I get a two indication. Where's that at? 270 with a two? Right there, it's on the reciprocal. Who cares about the heading, all right? Okay, a uh, couple other things you can see for VOR checks. Every 30 days, these need to be checked. It won't be checked by any means. I've never seen a, a private pilot, a student pilot or a private pilot check one. It's usually for uh, IFR students. But if you're gonna use it as your primary means of travel, primary means of navigation, you absolutely must check it within 30 days. One method I could use to check it is take a look at a Victor Airway, find a prominent land feature like an airport, fly over that, center the CDI, and see where it is. We're there. Oh, we got it. We got the, we got the red light. So almost done with this stuff. Let's pick it back up tomorrow. Couple more slides on VORs and we're done. This one, by the way, HSI. Like I mentioned to you guys earlier, the HSI has a VOR indicator, but it also has a heading. So I'm seeing the VOR indicator, but it moves along with the heading and as I change my headings, right? None of our training airplanes have HSIs. You have it in the Cirrus and you could use that. DME for distance measuring, none of them have that. And again, that's slant range. So 1.4 nautical miles, but then you got a triangle you got to solve for.